Well, 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 we're back. I could not be any more excited to be recording this right now because it means that we've restarted our in-person student nights. I don't know about you, but I've been waiting for this day since the very first day we had to shut down. In short, I've missed you so much. Of course, this isn't to say that we haven't done some really cool things online on our YouTube channel. Many of you have been tuning in every single week when we went completely online. Some of you, in fact, are tuning in right now. Shout out to you. Even more still, over a thousand of you watched some or all of the 44-hour live stream back in April. In my opinion, that is one of the most ambitious and fun things we've ever done in PCC students. So being online hasn't been all bad, not even close. We've done things we never would have done before as a result of quarantine. However, there's no denying that there's something special about being back together in person. And I am so glad that we are able to do that again. You know, PCC students isn't the only thing that's opening up again either. All over the place, businesses, restaurants, schools, and more are opening back up to the masses. In fact, I just drove by the movie theater yesterday to see that even it is open again. And you know what? I'm really excited about things opening back up but I can't shake the fact that it's still different. I still have to make sure my mask is with me wherever I go. I still have to make sure I sanitize my hands regularly. Over the past couple of weeks, I've been fighting what I know is just a cold, but the, oh my gosh, do I have COVID? Thought creeps into my head all the time. Things are different than they used to be. Each and every one of you has had to face something that you had no control over and figure out what to do as a result. Whether you're in school in a hybrid format or you're virtual only, you're having to navigate something that no one else alive before you has had to navigate. Since March, you and everyone around you has had to take each day, day by day, because to plan out any further than that has been difficult to say the least. In a COVID-19 world, you're faced with a decision every morning. Will you long for the way things were and be mad about how they are? Or will you make the most of this moment and look for what God might be doing in it? For the next two weeks, we're going to be looking at the life of a man named Joseph, who, when faced with hardships and setbacks out of his control, decided to make the most of the situations he found himself in. With God leading the way, Joseph turned those difficult moments in his life into nation-saving, family-reconciling stories that will help you and I do the same, right here, right now. Meet me at the crossroads. The story of Joseph begins in the first book of the Bible, Genesis chapter 37. Before we get into that though, Here's a word from today's video sponsor. Let's play Raid Shadow Legends. Start now for- Okay, 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 I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. This video has no sponsors. Literally, I only did that because I thought it was funny. Anyway, we're actually going to hop over to Genesis 37 and check out the life of Joseph from basically the very first time we hear about him. The, the scripture says this, now Israel, who was Joseph's dad, he's also known as Jacob, which is how I'll be referring to him, of the rest of the way, loved Joseph more than any of his other sons, because he had born to him in his old age, and he made an ornate robe for him. Whether you're online or in the room right now, I need you to interact with me for just a moment here. By show of hands, how many of you have siblings? Okay, all right, all right. Now, by a show of hands, how many of you believe that you're the favorite sibling? You're the favorite child in your family. Yeah, I knew you'd be raising your hands. I know I'm the favorite. I have two older brothers, and it's not even close. Of course, most of our parents would never choose just one of us to be the favorite. However, Jacob was unashamed about Joseph being his number one. This became a problem for Joseph, though, because he was the youngest sibling to 11 other brothers, and they were jealous. In fact, Genesis says that they couldn't even speak to nicely, nicely to him because of their envy. 
I won't get into all the details here, but in the next several verses, we're told that Joseph has literal dreams of his entire family bowing down to him. This happens twice, and as you would imagine, these dreams do not sit well with his brothers. They're so mad that they actually plot to kill Joseph. However, they reconsider and instead decide to sell him into slavery. How nice of them to reconsider. So they do, and Joseph gets sold to some people headed to Egypt. There he is sold again to a guy named Potiphar, who just so happens to work for Pharaoh. Now, I know we went through a decent bit of story there, but let me sum it up for you real quick. Joseph is almost murdered by his brothers, but is instead sold into slavery twice and ends up in Egypt serving a guy who works for Pharaoh, all because his dad loved him and he had some dreams. Seems a bit excessive, doesn't it? It all seems extremely unfair. Joseph literally did nothing wrong. He did nothing to deserve any of this. And while I know you can't relate to Joseph's exact circumstance, tell me, can you relate to one, two, three, or more bad things happening to you all in a row that you didn't do anything to cause? Can you see yourselves in Joseph's shoes when you think about the difficult times in your life that seem unfair? I bet you can. We've all been there. And of course, there's no greater example of this than COVID-19. And while that's the obvious one, Bad, hard things out of our control have been happening to us way before 2020. This is nothing new. Some are minor, and while they feel difficult in the moment, are relatively easy to overcome. Other bad things that happen to us, though, are very serious and can leave lasting damage and pain. You see, whenever our lives intersect with these events, we immediately have a choice. Will we let the pain overtake us? and live under the weight of these events? Or will we decide that, while it might be hard, this thing is not going to defeat me? Will we settle and say, I'll never be able to recover from this? Or will we rise out of the ashes, put our hope and trust in God, and make the most of whatever may come? This is the choice Joseph had to face too. Having been betrayed by his brothers, sold into slavery, and relocated far from home, it would have been so easy for Joseph to give up and live in his sorrow for the rest of his life. He could have decided that he was going to do the bare minimum to survive and always live a life of resentment toward his brothers and likely toward God. Even though the book of Genesis never literally says that Joseph made the choice to get up and make the most of his current situation, it's clearly the choice he made. In fact, two chapters later in Genesis 39, it says the Lord was with Joseph and he became a successful man. He was in the house of his Egyptian master. His master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord caused all that he did to prosper in his hands. So Joseph found favor in, the sight, in his sight and attended him. He made him overseer in his house and over all he had. The Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. You see, Joseph decided that he was not going to let the hardships and struggles he faced to defeat him and keep him down. Instead, he put his trust and hope in God. And Potiphar, his master, noticed and put him in charge of his house. Joseph's story could have been a lot different if he had given up and given in to his circumstances. Instead, he leveraged his bad situation and with God's leadership, made the most of it. You have that choice too. Many of you are likely standing at a crossroads right now. Maybe you're mad about COVID and you spend your days longing for things to be normal again. Maybe you're upset that you have to go to school and go to school online and not see your friends. And that makes you resent each day. Maybe you've been hurt by someone you love and you can't begin to comprehend why someone you love would do that to you. Wherever it is you are, you have a choice to make. Do I give in or do I get up? Joseph isn't special. He's just like you and me. He had plans, ambitions, and hopes for the future. And when those things were taken away from him by his brothers, he decided that God was greater than the struggles he faced and chose to live into that. You can do exactly the same thing he did. You can be free. 
And listen, don't hear me say, oh, just get over it and quit being upset about your circumstance. Absolutely not. Not to spoil anything, but we'll see next week that Joseph is still affected by and emotional about his brother's betrayal many years later. But that didn't hold him down. You can be hurting and seek help coping with your struggle and decide that you're going to rise above it. Joseph did, and you can too. As we break into our small groups or online groups, consider the crossroads you're standing at now. Consider what life would be like if you decided that you were going to trust in God and his plan for you and begin to get beyond your struggle. As you talk with your small group, open up, be honest, be vulnerable, and make the decision to get up instead of giving in. And to that end, let me pray for you now. God, thank you for today. Thank you for a new day, a new opportunity to get up instead of giving in. God, a new chance to say, yes, I've been hurt. Yes, this is hard. Yes, I don't know where I need to go, but God, I trust you to lead me. Today is a new chance to say that for everybody who can hear my voice right now. So as we speak with our friends and our leaders, would we open up about our struggle? Would we open up about the things that seem impossible to move past? And together, would we make the choice to believe in you, to trust in your plan, and to go where you lead us? Just like Joseph did. We thank you, Lord, and we love you. Amen.